chap is, we're going to have the same issue with chap on 2, 4, 5, slide 2. But it, it works just a tad differently. So my interface S0, interface S0. Okay, <clears throat> let's start with this side. I want this side again to be the authenticator. He's going to be the one to say, hey, you got you to gotta authenticate to me. So this side is going to have PPP authentication chat now. So this side is going to say, I want chat. And it's going to immediately follow it up with the challenge. So the challenge gets sent across. Now, that challenge that goes across is going to have a key piece of information as part of the challenge. Well, it's going to have two things. One of the things it's going to have is this side's router name is going to be in there. And that's what was on that previous slide. It's also going to have a secret, or it's going to have the, the value that's going to help with the hash, right? Okay, so this side gets it. Now, here's, here's the beauty of chat. You don't need that sent username. When it gets to the other side, we've already supplied kind of a username. When it gets to the other side, this side's going to look for a username R1, it's going to look for a username that matches the one that was provided, and then a password that goes along with it. Password Cisco. Okay? When it, if it finds one, it grabs the password that's associated with the name that was provided in the challenge. It sends back the other way its own router name as the username. But the password is Cisco, the one that it picked up there. So that means on this side, what I need is username R2, password Cisco. So that I can match what gets sent back to me, and then I will send back and accept. So in order to make chap work, you need one side that's forcing chap. So it says, hey, I want chap. This side gets the username from the challenge. So you need a username R1 with the opposite side's router name, password Cisco. It takes its own router name with that password, sends it back. So that means on this side, you need a username command with the name from the other side that matches the password. So you need username commands that reference opposite names, but the passwords have to match. And then this side has the PPP auth chat, so this is the side saying I need you to authenticate to me. And right now, with the blue line, we are authenticating that direction. Okay? I'm sorry, Correct. I drew that the wrong way. We are authenticating to this device here. This is the device that's validating who we are. Now, in spirit of how they have the config, I can come over here and do PPP on chat on that side, which will cause us now to authenticate that direction. But do I need to change anything else? What's the red going to look like? I want chat. Here's my challenge. My challenge is R2. That's my name, right? Do I have a username that matches R2? I do, right? Password Cisco. So then I'm going to send back. My user is R1 because that's my name. My password is Cisco, because that's the one I looked up. And when the other side gets it, R1 Cisco, it already has an entry. So these user commands will actually, username commands, will actually work both directions. 
So all I have to do is add the other PPP off chap on the other side, and I'm now authenticating the other direction. Does that make sense? So again, if I kind of get rid of all of this, and just get back to the 245 section two, the way it looks, does everybody see how you don't need both of these commands? And that's what's misleading about how they portray this is it makes it look like you need this on both sides. You only need this on one side or the other side, and that determines who authenticates who. But again, not a bad idea to authenticate both directions. Does that make sense? Awesome. 